Imagine teaching a self-driving car to recognize stop signs and discovering that sometimes, no matter how much data you give it, it never really learns the correct shape. Other times, it learns every single pixel of a specific stop sign in your training set, right down to the tiny speck of dirt in the corner. But when you show it a new stop sign in the real world, it fails completely. Why would the same machine learning algorithm make such different mistakes? The answer lies in a fundamental concept buried inside every machine learning model. Bias versus variance. A delicate balance that can make or break a model's ability to generalize to new situations. And let me surprise you a bit. This is not a purely machine learning idea. If you've done physics experiments, you already know these concepts. Bias and variance in machine learning are simply the systematic and statistical errors you've been calculating in physics labs for years. We also know that just like in physics, most machine learning models are probabilistic. But here's the real question. How exactly are concepts like bias and variance related to the probability models that both physicists and data scientists rely on? And what can we learn by seeing them through both lenses? Stay tuned, because by the end of this video, you'll not only understand bias and variance mathematically, but you'll also see them as two sides of the same coin, whether you're measuring the period of a pendulum or training a neural network. Let's start with something familiar. Imagine we're measuring the period T of a pendulum using a stopwatch. That's the physics example. Now, in machine learning, think about measuring house prices in a city. In both cases, if we repeat the measurement, timing the pendulum multiple times, or collecting multiple house prices, we almost never get exactly the same number. This is where probability comes in. We can think of the period T or the house price as a random variable Y, drawn from some probability distribution P of Y. Now, in quantum mechanics, probabilities come from the intrinsic randomness of nature, like the position of an electron. But here, for our pendulum or housing market, the probability isn't because nature is random at its core. It's because we are ignorant of all the tiny factors that influence the result. There are small variations in how we start the pendulum, air currents in the room, our reaction time when hitting the stopwatch. For house prices, there are endless micro factors, paint color, the exact mood of the buyer, tiny structural details. If the pendulum is in equilibrium and the housing market is relatively steady, then both the period T and the house price will tend to follow a Gaussian or normal distribution. Why? That's the central limit theorem at work. Many small independent factors add together to give a bell-shaped distribution. I recommend watching our previous videos in this series for a physics-based insight on this. The probabilistic nature of our systems means, before we actually take a measurement, all outcomes are possible. In theory, the pendulum's period could be zero seconds or a million seconds, and the house price could be zero dollars or infinite but those extreme values are astronomically unlikely. Instead, the distribution has a most probable value, the mean E of Y. The width of that distribution, the standard deviation, tells us how much our measurements fluctuate. If it's narrow, our next measurement will be close to the last. If it's wide, we might get something very different. And here's the key point. Those fluctuations come from two distinct sources. In physics, we call them systematic and statistical errors. In machine learning, we call them bias and variance. Let's make this precise. Suppose we're predicting Y, say the price of a house, using our machine learning model, and the prediction is Y hat. A natural way to measure the error is to use the mean squared error, defined as expected value of the square of the distance between variable Y and its predicted value. Expanding that, we get the following equation. Now, here's a neat trick. Add zero in the form E of Y squared minus itself. It seems pointless, but watch what happens after rearranging the terms. The first term is the squared bias, the square of the difference between our model's prediction and the expected value of Y. In physics, it measures systematic error. How far off we are, on average, because of wrong assumptions in our model. The second term is the variance, the spread of the true data around its mean. 
In machine learning, variance measures how sensitive our model is to small changes in the training data. So, in machine learning language, MSE is the square of the bias plus the variance. In physics language, we refer to MSE as the square of the total error defined as follows. The bias in machine learning is what physicists refer to as the systematic error. And variance in machine learning is just the statistical error in physics measurements. It's the same decomposition, just different names. Now, let's zoom out. In our previous videos, we discussed that in a simple linear regression, the best prediction y hat for a given input is the expected value of y. In other words, the bias is zero. However, this can lead to a high variance in the model. In general, computing bias and variance is essential for understanding a model's performance. Bias is the systematic error that comes from oversimplifying the model, making assumptions that prevent it from capturing the true complexity of the data. High bias leads to underfitting. The model's predictions are consistently wrong in the same way, because the model is too rigid. Variance measures how much the model's predictions would change if we trained it on a different sample of the same size. High variance leads to overfitting. The model learns patterns that are just random noise in the training data, and those patterns disappear in new data. Here's the key. By decomposing the error into bias and variance, we can figure out whether our performance problem is due to rigid assumptions or excessive complexity. That's powerful because it directly informs what to do next. Do we make the model more flexible, simplify it, get more data, or add regularization? And here's a nice analogy for physicists. Bias and variance behave a bit like position and momentum in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. In quantum mechanics, you can't measure position and momentum both with arbitrary precision. Reducing uncertainty in one increases uncertainty in the other. In machine learning, it's not a law of nature, but something similar often happens. If you reduce bias by making the model more flexible, you often increase variance. And if you reduce variance by making the model simpler, you often increase bias. One practical way to adjust this balance is regularization. Regularization adds a penalty term to the loss function, constraining the model's parameters. This effectively increases bias slightly but decreases variance, helping the model generalize better. It's like telling your model, you can't be too wild with your parameters, keep them in check. So, whether you're timing a pendulum, pricing houses, or training a deep neural network, the lesson is the same. Your total error is the sum of your systematic bias and your random variance. And in future videos, we'll dig deeper into exactly how penalty terms, like L1 and L2 regularization, reshape that balance, and how you can control them to get the best possible performance on new, unseen data.